good day everybody um, it has been a while since I've put together a Maya tutorial um, busy with school among other things work whatever but uh, recently I've come across a few uh, comments put on some of the other tutorial videos I put up a while back specifically the how to make a Maya companion cube tutorials or not Maya companion cube uh, portal weighted companion cube whatever but you know, I've, people leave uh, really nice comments just saying that they learned a lot. Um, someone specifically said they learned more from that video than their art teacher ever taught them. So, uh, you know, I really appreciate getting stuff like that. The comments may be few and far between, but, you know, when you get them there, you know, they can really motivate you. So, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm motivated. Um, this won't be a huge tutorial. It's not going to be multiple parts. I think I'll probably top it off at around 15 minutes, uh, give or take a few, whatever. But um, in this video, I want to show um, a, a, another tool, um, another way to do things um, that for the longest time I didn't even know how to do properly. Um, this is, uh, well, I'm going to show how, at least, how I like to put holes into objects, circles specifically. How to put a circle hole into say a plane or a box um, or you know make it from itself. Um, I have two examples I'll show at the end of the video of how I used these techniques to make two pretty good models. Uh, but um, you know basically it's not about making the models it's learning the tools so you can make better things. Um, in the weighted companion cube tutorials it wasn't about making the weighted companion cube it was learning all those techniques so if you wanted to whatever you want to make you may have hit a roadblock and then say you come across this video and say oh shit that's how I do a that that's that's a good way to do a, a circle a hole in uh, whatever I'm trying to do here um, so that's what I'm hoping, you know, happens with these, uh, videos. So, uh, I'm bullshitting too much. Let's go into it. Um, so basically I'm going to show, uh, yeah, like how to put a circle into something. So we're going to go ahead and create a, uh, polygon cylinder. Let me bring that, uh, bad boy up a little bit. Scale of 90. All right. What makes a circle? A uh, bunch of evenly distributed vertices. At least that's how I look at it. Um, you hit three, with the exception of not having the extra line at the you know at the top here. That is basically a circle there. Um, it would look a lot sharper if I added a line here. So let's just go ahead and uh, see how that looks. And yeah, there's more of a better circle. But. Uh, Let's go ahead and undo that. So I don't really need it. This cylinder itself that we just made is not going to be, well, it'll kind of be used. So we'll uh, keep it as is. Except when you when you make a, a circle, it doesn't need to be 18 points as you have here. Um, I like to work with eight. It's a very simple number. Uh, it's an even number, um, and you only need eight points to make the circle work. So I'm going to show you two techniques really quick. One on how to put a hole into a plane, and then the other how to make the hole by itself. So let's go ahead and bring in a polygon plane, scale him up, we're going to rotate him, Let's get rid of this grid. It's annoying me. All right. So we have the plane. Let's see. The plane already has a, uh, a bunch of verts, lines, whatever in it. That's we're not going to be using any of those. We could, but I want to make this as simple and hopefully as understandable as possible. And to make it understandable, it's not going to be me telling you. It's going to be me showing you. So we're going to go ahead, highlight the plane, go into the attributes of it. Let's bring this thing all the way down to nothing, so it's one face. Um, step by step, 
let's see, we need, well, we need eight points in here. So let's start with the most simplest. We have one at top, one at bottom, one on the left, and one on the right. So we need a lines, two lines really quick. So we got one and two, basically two segments and two segments. Um, when you hear me say one line, that just means I'm getting one line in there. So don't be confused when I say one, you see a two over here on the right side. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to make it as least full confusing as possible. So let's go into the side view. Now we have those lines. Now we need more lines or more verts for these last four points. Um, so we're going to bring in another line, two more lines, one on the left, one on the right, and one more on top, one more on bottom. You'll see why in a moment, or maybe you already know, but you got to do it anyway. So now we have all of those points. Now we have one, two, three, four. Those are the extra four points that are going to be where the cylinder is. So if we scale the cylinder up, we just want to get it so the top, bottom, left, and right points reach those closest verts right here. Top, bottom, right, and left, whatever. Now we have these verts on the corners still pretty far away. So if we highlight the plane, go to verts, go ahead and highlight all four of those. With your scale tool, bring them in. Put them right on top of those, the verts that the cylinder has. So let's go right back into perspective. Let's go ahead and move this guy backwards because we don't really need him at the moment. Actually, you know what? You can disappear. So now we have we have more or less our polygon or our uh, cylinder, so to speak, faces right here, showing where our circle is. Now, if you hit three, it's not going to look like a circle, missing one key point, removing the faces. Now, if you hit three, there is your circle. So with this circle, you can ha grab the edges. You can extrude them backwards so you actually make the hole. If you want, go ahead and drop a line in here to try to give it some sharpness. So if you hit three, the inside's a little sharper. You, the outside isn't, and I'm not going to leave you guys hanging and saying, ah, figure it out yourselves. You bring in another line. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do it this way, um, delete everything else except for one, two, three and you know the faces that it shares and then duplicate special three times and you're good to go or you can double click the line we just made if you go to the poly split ring 2 which is what I just put down you'll see it has a weight of 0 0.02 now if I move that it'll move the line let's go ahead and drop another line right here. Now if we go to poly split ring 3 which is what I just put down now click on it its weight is 0 0.042 if we change that to 0 0.02 just like the first one we did hit enter it'll put it exactly along this as the first one was put they're both in the same spot now we can do that two more times we go to 4 Turn that to 0 0.02. Ah, you see it drops it all the way down to the bottom. Do the math in reverse. Go to 0 0.08, since it's on the bottom half. Nope, that didn't work either. Let's see, no, it's 0 0.98, because it's 0 0.02. Subtract that 0 0.02 from 100, and you get 0 0.98. My apologies, I should have been a little more clear about that. Uh, let's go to the last one, number five. Let's go to nine and eight as well. All those lines that we just put down are in exactly the same spot. Now if we hit three, everything is sharper. And there you go. That's how you actually put a hole uh, with the smallest amount of polygons. Uh, I guess you could probably do six, uh, but like I said, 8 works really well. I try to stick with just that. 
um, I don't go less than it. So if we get rid of you, let's go ahead and show last hidden. Bring this guy back. Now this is how we make a polygon from not, or a, a hole from nothing. Get rid of all these faces. Now this technique right here is, after I'm done showing you, I'll show you how I use this technique for a, uh, a little contest I did a little while back. So if you just grab the edges, use the extrude tool, scale them all out just a smidge. Go to faces, delete all the center ones. Now you only have this little ring here. That ring is still a perfect circle. From here, you can grab this edge here, you know, pull it out, you know, extrude it some more if you want, do whatever you want to do with it, whatever. You made a hole out of nothing. I don't know, that could be the front end of a, I don't know, some kind of a World War II war plane or something. Um, but, uh, that's um, you know how to make the uh, circles in objects. Let me show you two examples I've done. This knife here, I did at uh, for a contest on 3dm3.com. Um, it was a timed competition. They gave you two hours to make your own army knife, and I did this in about an hour and 50 minutes. And you'll see I have the uh, circles here, uh, one, two, and three of them. And that second technique that I just showed just before I brought this up is how I did this. I made the uh, polygon, or I made the uh, cylinder, extruded a little bit, deleted the faces in the center, and then copied that uh, two more times. Rotated the last one a little bit so I'd have a you know a little curve, I guess, to it. Um, and then just pulled out the rest of the faces, or the, the lines, extruded a few more times, and, and that's how it turned out. You know, gave it some nice depth. I actually ended up winning this competition too, which is really nice. Um, I like to think I won it because of the circles alone, because you know, any artist knows. Well, at least my, uh, my artist or 3D uh, Studio Max or whatever. You know, putting holes into something with the lowest amount of resolution can be pretty difficult uh, if you don't know what you're doing. Um, using booleans is crap. Um, there may be some points where it could be useful. I have not found a useful tool for it yet. But um, yeah, there's a, a knife I made. And then we have my current project that I have on hold is a, a chopper I made. Um, the two quick examples of how I use circles here are going to be this puppy right here at the top of the uh, fork. Same technique as I did with the uh, knife. Uh, started one on this side, went along the axis and duplicated it, or scaled it, and uh, connected them. Made the whole top part. At the time when I made it, this thing was, you know, straight, like so. So I was able to, you know, model it properly. But, um, yeah, that's how I made that. But the best thing on this bike would have to be these right here, the rotors. Um, this is modeled after an actual rotor I found online. Um, I wanted to make a drilled rotor because they just look so much more badass. So I started with a tube rather than a cylinder. And I made the tube have as many segments as it shows here. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Um, and I did the math. I had, you know, three across and three up and down per hole. So after doing the math, I uh, made sure I had the proper amount of segments going each way. And I, uh, yeah, just uh, pulled out the verts where they needed to go, scaled them, extruded them. I didn't do every individual hole, though. That would have been, uh, would have drove me insane. So what I ended up doing is I took all these faces. Let's see. That. Whoa. All these deleted the rest. So I inverted the selection. Uh, deleted the rest, and I duplicate special this point 
uh, five or eight or nine times, connected them all, merged the verts together, and then I did another tube in the middle and extruded that. Only did one fork at a time. I did the first, and then I duplicated special that one two more times, connected it all in, boom, it was done. It took me a little while to get it done uh, because it was my first time ever doing it, but it came out pretty nice. Um, I've at this point I have not finished this project just because <laughs> I'm not looking forward to doing the engine, not looking forward to it at all. But um, you know it's nice, whatever. But this isn't to show my work. This is to show technique. And uh, that's the kind of stuff you can do when you actually learn how to use, uh, how to put holes into things properly. Um, hopefully this tutorial taught uh, anyone who watches it something. Um, hopefully I'll put some more stuff up more frequently. Like I said, I am uh, re-motivated. Um, yeah, so uh, any comments, you know where to throw them. Any messages, you know how to toss those as well. And uh, yeah. Hopefully I'll get another uh, tutorial up here pretty soon, show you some more techniques that I uh, do that uh, make things a little easier for me and make, uh, make some of these uh, models look a little nicer. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, take it easy.